Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to take a terrible plan and make it much, much better. Now this is a yet to be built condo unit in Toronto. It's 566 square feet or 52 square meters. It's a one bedroom unit. We're gonna walk through the plan first and we're gonna talk about all the design problems that are in this unit and there's quite a few. And then we're gonna work through a couple of options to fix the plan and make it better. So let's get started by looking at the design problems. And you don't have to go very far from the front door to find the first design issue. When you walk in the front door, there is this space here that they have labeled as a den. And the way they have styled it is they have a pull-out sofa and a TV, which I don't think is a very good idea right off the entry. This really feels like the fire exit of the building. And I don't think if you were a guest, you would want to stay here. And I think if you lived and owned the unit, you would not want to sit back here to watch TV right by the door and right by the hall. It's a very odd choice right off the bat. Now, moving down into the rest of the unit, the bathroom is towards the back. It has a very strange condition with a double door which actually bangs into each other. So I think the idea is, is that the bathroom can act as both the ensuite to the bedroom, plus it can be accessible for guests. But in a 566 square foot unit, do you really need to sort of have that kind of magical solution, which is really odd, and you're gonna end up banging the doors into each other, which I think is really bizarre. So the bedroom in this unit is what I call a cheater bedroom. And these are very common in new builds in Toronto, in in Vancouver, in Sydney, Australia, all around the world where real estate prices are high because the frontage of the building is very limited. There's a very few, um, few number of windows in these units in order to fit the maximum number of units into the floor plate. And so what that does is that pushes the bedroom way back into the unit and there's no window. And so what they do is to try to compensate for this is that they open up usually with sliding doors a really kind of big opening which is okay but i think in this case the bedroom actually has a few issues because it's really quite open to the dining room and the kitchen there's not really a lot of privacy and i wonder actually how much you would actually close these sliding doors and whether it would just be better just to have it as a studio unit so then moving down into the kitchen living and dining this is where i think we actually have significant problems the kitchen sticks out from the wall. We have to have this plumbing wall behind the kitchen because in these high-rise buildings, you need to have about a nine inch plumbing wall behind the kitchen to access all of the piping for the, for the, uh, the sink and the dishwasher and also usually the electrical and stuff for the kitchen. And what that means is that means that the effective width of the room is actually reduced and if you think about the three feet or so, the uh, 0.91 meters that you need in front of the kitchen as a kind of work zone, that means that we're left with about seven feet or 2.1 meters as the kind of width of the living room and the dining room, which is really too narrow. And there's all sorts of problems that this also causes. And you can really see it with the sofa because the sofa really has nowhere else to go, but there's no place for a TV. Where would you put a TV? I guess that's why they have the TV back in the fire exit down at the bottom, because I guess this is where you're supposed to watch TV because there's really no place in this unit to put a TV. And if you're sitting on the sofa, you're gonna have a great view of the kitchen. It's not ideal. So I think there's a lot of issues here and I think they're trying trying to make it really into a one bedroom plus a den for the real estate listing, but I really don't think that actually works in the size of this unit. Sometimes it's not a good thing to be tall and slim. I think this unit has a lot of challenges. So we're gonna work on fixing the plan and I wanna just clear everything out and just have a look at it. And just for context, I'm leaving this front entry closet and also the mechanical, there's a, there's a heat coil unit that actually heats and uh, cools the unit. It's very common in Toronto. So I'm gonna leave those two things intact and we're gonna work with the rest of the space and try to come up with a solution for this plan. I mean, it looks better already. I think with everything cleared out, it's like, whoa, there's actually quite a bit of room here. So I do wanna talk about this because this is really kind of important. And I want to show you a couple of things that are really essential to making this unit work. And in developments like this, we have to fit the kitchen, the laundry, and the bathroom somewhere in the space. And these are the pieces that we have to fit into the plan. And they are kind of like puzzle pieces. I call them puzzler pieces, if you've taken my online course. And really organizing this plan is really about arranging these pieces because 
the layout of the unit, the outer sort of shape is set by the developer because they're trying to maximize the number of units to fit into the building. And in some ways I understand that because affordability is a big issue and this unit is trying to be a bit more affordable, which I think is an important thing. So we have to place these elements. So let's think about where they would go. We've got a bathroom and currently, as you remember from the original layout, the bathroom was actually placed at the back and then they placed the kitchen up at the top and I just don't think ooh, I just took a little bit of the laundry with me when I scooped it away so I'm just going to remove the kitchen up to the top and I just don't think that this is the best arrangement because this makes the width too narrow and I think it pushes the bedroom uh, too far um, into the center of the space and makes the living room small and then I also think the other issue is we've got this dead space here so what I actually think we need to do to be 100% honest is I think the bathroom needs to go down here I think this is really essential and I think that is really the big move that we make because that allows this to be much bigger and I just want to talk about this for a sec I'm gonna pull up another layer and I'm just gonna do a little bit of sketching on here and I just want to draw in a kind of square that would be the bedroom. And I want to talk about positioning this because this is really kind of the crux of the whole matter. And if we have our bedroom, and remember, it's kind of a square that maybe is about, I'd say, like 10 or 11 feet by 11 feet, which is about 3.35 meters by 3.35 meters. Remember, in the original layout, the bedroom was actually right up here and it made this space in my opinion very small and not a great idea and what I think we should do and this is my big idea with the bathroom out in the back and I think it's really important to move the bathroom down here if we are now to take the bedroom let's say we just slide it down to the bottom and we'll just maybe incorporate the, the heat coil into that and somehow create you know the bedroom at the bottom we also possibly could just fit the laundry maybe somehow on the side of the bedroom and it's a three foot by three foot chunk maybe it kind of fits somewhere like that that would maybe allow us to get a closet or something against the laundry in this area which I think would be a good use of space of course we're never going to have a window in this bedroom there's nothing we can do about it but we could open it with sliding doors to the hall but then look at this we have a much bigger living dining kitchen space and I think what we should do is we should just take the kitchen and we should just move it far to the back and rotate it so we get the full full width of the unit at the end and I think this is a much better strategy for this unit because you get basically more than 50% of the unit for living dining kitchen and then we make a more efficient bedroom area as a sleeping area and we push the bathroom in the back so I'm just going to take these elements off I'm going to put my walls in I've done a little bit of work in advance I've sized everything and this is where I think we should end up with the design and I want to talk about this a little bit you're going to walk in you're going to have an entry space you can go into the bathroom you can then walk down the hall we've effectively shortened the length of the hall because remember before it went way down to the end the laundry faces into the hall these are sliding doors that could probably open both ways we have a bigger bedroom closet the bed can fit in here it's a compact bedroom but hey we're at 566 square feet the kitchen against the back wall leaves this entire space open for flexible furniture and people can decide how they're going to furnish it so let's move on and try some furniture placement and I do enjoy using the Morfolio stencils the Planetac stencils so I'm going to pull up some furniture and we're going to try to place it in the unit we're going to start with the dining table so I'm just going to transfer that over I'm going to line up the crop mark on my stencil with the crop mark on my page I've drawn a three foot or 910 millimeter crop mark and now I'm just going to transfer this over of course we can't have a uh, eight person dining table that would be unrealistic so I'm just going to make <laughs> a four person dining table and then I'm going to transfer some other stuff so let's do a bed so we'll do a queen size bed because I don't think we're going to fit a king size bed in this unit and by transferring these over these are all coming into scale now which is just awesome I'm going to also bring a sofa so I'll bring a sectional sofa they had a sectional in the original plan so let's just work with that as well and I've got a sectional sofa I wonder if I can bring over also a chair let's see if I can bring a chair okay I'll bring a chair and I wonder if there's anything else I should bring 
Um, oh, a TV. We have to have a TV because remember in the original plan, there is actually no space for a TV. And now I think we're going to have a good spot for a TV. So I'm going to make sure we bring the TV over as well. Okay, so this is our furniture. I'm going to come back to the plan. I'm going to start out by placing the bed. And I really like the idea of the queen size bed and the night tables fitting into this little notch at the bottom that we've created with the fan coil unit. And the reason I like that is because it just kind of tucks it into the corner. And I think, I mean, if you had a king size bed, I think you would have to maybe rearrange the room a little bit. But I think with the queen size bed, it actually just fits fairly neatly there. And I think this is a really efficient bedroom space because you can slide the doors, you can go into your closet. I mean, it's not I, perfect by any means, but I think it does work. I also think that now we actually have room for a dining table, which is interesting. Now, I guess you could put an island, but I'm just gonna use a dining table. And I think if I push it up against the wall, it actually gives us quite a bit of circulation space. And then look at this, we've actually got now a really big living space, which before it felt really jammed in and not very well used in terms of the layout of the space. We can put our sectional sofa up at the top. We also have room for a television, which is interesting. So I can put the TV <laughs> perfectly on the opposite wall. And I have space for, oops, a chair. I'm just gonna go back and unexpand it because I stretched it when I was moving it. So I'll bring my swivel chair, I'll rotate it so it can go into the corner and then we can have an extra piece of seating. And then I think for the coffee table, I'm going to just propose that we do a round coffee table, maybe a three foot wide round coffee table, something like that. And I will just draw this in. And then we are going to have a look at what we've come up with with our furniture placement in the unit. So this is what I think we should do to this 566 square foot or 52 square meter unit in Toronto. I think this makes the plan much better than what it was before. We have a much bigger and more flexible living, dining, kitchen space that takes advantage of the view. It's not jammed in. The bedroom has been downsized, but I think that's okay. It's a small unit. Think Japanese design, space efficiency, the bathroom off of the entry. I mean, it's close to the bedroom. It's not, you know, miles away. It's not immediately adjacent like it was before, but it is still close and it's accessible for guests. And I think in a small unit, this works out okay. You really don't need that den space. It really felt like a fire exit. So this is option one. I've also got option two. And I want you to study both ideas and I want you to leave a comment which one you like better because option one and option two both would fit into the unit and I'm very interested to hear what you think would be the better layout for this unit and thank you for watching.